Hi again, this is uh, Dan Goldman here, and today I'm looking at the sequential profit six. Um, it's great to see that Dave Smith has uh, reacquired the sequential name back from Yamaha with the help of, I think he was the president of Roland, so Dave must be well chuffed that he could finally release uh, a spiritual heir to the profit five, uh, but with a sequential badge on as well, which is down here and on the back. Um, so very much in the vein of the profit five the profit six is a vco driven uh polysynth this one's a six voice as opposed to the profit five which was a five um there's loads of other nice additions as well which i'm going to go through but the main thing i want to show you is the sound of the unit and how great it sounds uh how authentic it sounds and um the kind of mojo that it's got because it really has that vintage kind of vibe to it the build quality um is very solid um very similar to other dsi synths um you've got these lovely walnut end cheeks and walnut surrounding the keyboard 49 note four octave keyboard um obviously the profit five had a five octave keyboard um but it doesn't really impact on the uh the instrument at all um for soloing it's great two-handed playing it's still great um, obviously an extra octave would have probably been preferable but then the footprint of the keyboard would have been bigger takes up more space it's heavier um, so it's easier to transport the fact that it's more compact as well if you if you want to extend the range you can either uh, connect an external MIDI keyboard via USB or MIDI uh, and you can use the octave switches as well to to extend the range as well um, as an example, my Moog, Moog Voyager, which is three and a half octaves, um, I've never really had an issue with that feeling too short for soloing on, especially with uh, the octave switches as well. So for me, uh, it's not an issue at all. For some people, they might prefer five octaves, but really when you hear the beauty of this synth, uh, that kind of just uh, pales uh really in relation to the uh, the, the, the the sonic strength of this keyboard anyway enough talking um let's check out this sound really has that vintagey tone to it. the vco sound great we've got a nine octave frequency range in combination with the transpose buttons here two oscillators per voice each has very variable wave shapes if i just turn off oscillate two in the mixer variable pulse width as well uh, the oscillators go from triangle through to uh, saw through to the variable pulse uh, you've got oscillator sync as well show you that turn up oscillator again <laughs> Um, I love this polybrass sound. Reminds me of level 42 tracks and uh, loads of other classic kind of fusion tracks. Now you can hear that sounds quite wide there. That's because the pan spread has been switched on, which spreads the stereo field, spreads the oscillators across the stereo field, the voices across the stereo field rather really nice effect um, okay so um, because the oscillators are very stable which is what you want in a polysynth you don't want any of those embarrassing on stage nightmares where the synth suddenly goes out of tune like the old mini moogs and like my memory moog which I have over here um, which is just out of shot uh, but Dave has added his slot parameter to add back in the instability but in a controlled way which is really nice So it's kind of like a random detune rather than the fine tune which is more linear. Sounds great. Um, in addition to the oscillators we've uh, got uh, a sub octave as well which really goes deeper, triangle sub oscillator. 
that's one of the things I really like about this synth. In addition to the fact it's got that real vintage vibe to it, um, the low end on it is great. A lot nicer to my ears than um, the Prophet 8, um, which I also have. Um, especially if you put it in unison mode. It's great for bass sounds. Just wind that into full again. Uh, you've also got a digital, I think it's a digital noise source here. Um, I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's digital. Um, um, and you have a low pass filter, uh, which you can control by velocity. And it has half and full tracking. Um, that's very much mo uh, modeled in the vein of the Prophet 5 filter. Um, and I think it could be the same one that's in the Pro 2. But in addition, there's also a resonant high pass filter, which doesn't self oscillate like the low pass filter, but it's great to have that. In combination with the low pass, you can get band pass filtering, which is really broadens the sonic scope of this instrument, especially in comparison to the Prophet 5, which just had the uh, low pass filter. Again, you can set that to be controlled by velocity as well. The keyboard itself feels great, really buttery, really smooth, super fast, nicely balanced. One of the nicest that I've ever played, in fact. Um, so full marks for that uh, keyboard feeler. Um, it, it just makes you want to play. And that, in combination with the sound, makes it a very... Uh, enticing instrument, um, very inspiring to play, um, and it's as soon as you start playing, you start getting creative and start getting ideas um, together. Um, moving on to a bass sound, um, the envelopes are very very snappy, so you can do Moog esque kind of basses very nicely as well. So it's a great bass machine in combination with the sub oscillator, which I've already shown you. You go right down to the click there. Very snappy. Great for percussion and drum sounds, which you can make using the noise and the filter resonance and when it self oscillates. Wind back in the sub oscillator. Another great thing, you've got aftertouch as well, which you can send to several destinations, and it responds very uh, reliably. Uh, you can change the curve in the global menus up here. There's a few global parameters, but the beauty of this synth is it's a knob function. What you see is what you get, and what you uh, you know, it's just great for for for, for tweaking and using your ears rather than being glued to a screen. Obviously, some people prefer to have a screen with loads of feedback on and. That's cool, but there's other synths that obviously do do that. But this is a very much a pure analog synth in the vein of the Prophet Five, so I can understand why uh, why uh, Dave Smith hasn't gone for like uh, a, a kind of more complex screen with loads of parameters on and things like that. It's nice to have everything just there in front of you and to really listen when you're tweaking sounds rather than visually be looking at stuff all the time. Uh, it reminds me of my Nord Lead Four in, in in as much as that. You know, uh, there's no patch naming as such, but there is a sound tower editor where you can do that and and uh, organize your patches as well. The filters themselves just sound great, really wide ranging. Really piercing high end if you need it, but they can be subtle as well. Um, now let's um, go to um, a pad sound that I've made here. Beautiful sounding rich pad, almost memory moog esque. We've got a polyphonic glide. Oh. 
hold function is pretty handy as well there. You can just play chord, hold it and then filter. can get some internal clipping which is normal for this synth but so you just have to watch your levels internally with the mixer um, but the pads sound amazing on it as well as you can hear um, unison mode um, you can um, uh, stack up to six voices together Nice kind of jazz fusion lead there. Using sync, also like a sync. Um, obviously you can do those kind of sounds, but you can go much further with the modulation options as well. So you've got your poly mod. Send that to several destinations, including the filters, um, the shape of oscillator one, uh, pulse width. You've also got an analog distortion unit, which you'll find the same one in the Prophet 12 for dirtying things up. And one other thing which I really love, um, let's watch those levels again. Um, if you play a chord, then press unison. Sorry, press unison and play a chord. You've now got chord memory. Very nice indeed. You can easily get lost in this and it just sounds so good. The sweet spot is very wide. And as I said earlier, just very inspiring to use and can really sound like those old polys, such as the Prophet 5 and the, and the Memory Moog. Um, a little bit more stable, obviously, but um, there's enough on board to kind of take with the slop and the fine tune and the modulation options to take it um, um, mo to make it sound more unstable. Um, whilst on that subject, um, the LFO goes into audio range. So you can get almost ring mod effects. Uh, there's five types, triangle, saw, reverse saw, square, random. There's also a hidden um, option to use noise as a source as well here. So we have yeah one LFO, but also oscillator two can go into low frequency as well. So you kind of got two LFOs there, and that coupled with a poly mod, uh, you've got an arpeggiator, uh, which can be clocked via MIDI, same as the uh, the LFO, and you've also got um, a sequencer as well. Which records polyphonically. It doesn't record knob movements, uh, but it's a great basic sequence. So you can record ties um, and, and rests and things. But I'm just going to put in a quick sequence here just to show you. You just hit record, and it's got 64 steps. Back. We've got different uh, beat divisions, tempo here, which again you can clock to MIDI, and 
let's record another one here. You can record a combination of poly chords and uh, mono lines, so you could go. Now whilst that's going, I want to show you the digital effects as well which sound great. You've got two buses and you've got parameter control over each of those as well to affect like the tone. It's different per, per effect. Um, but let me just show you those. So here we've got um, a bucket brigade delay on A and on B we've got a room reverb. So we select A, let's tweak the mix of the delay. You can sing that to the clock as well. Which is cool. Change the mix. If it's not uh, set to the clock, then you can you can use it almost like an analog delay there. Let's just stop that sequence a minute. Um, Turn the mix down. Uh, room reverb on B here. Let's just select B. Um, back to A, let's check out the other effects. Digital delay. These are 24 bit effects as well, very high quality, very musical, really enhance the instrument. Um, what else have we got? Chorus, which sounds great for widening the sound and adding movement. Uh, and then I think on B we've got, uh, we've also got, sorry, phases. Resonant phaser, which is phaser one, and a slightly uh, less resonant one, resonant one, which is two. Uh, on B, we also have um, whole reverb, which sounds great. Plate reverb. And um, now a spring reverb as well, which is really cool. And also, if you hit the side of the instrument, uh, almost if as if you'd hit an amp and the spring reverb starts rattling. You get that same effect. Which is a bit of a novelty, but it's pretty cool. Um, so all, all things considered, these effects really enhance the instrument. They sound really good. Um, and it's nice to have it all self-contained in one box. Um, on the back, uh, there's inputs for the filter, volume, via pedal, sustain, sequencer, uh, which can also be triggered from an audio source, MIDI through, MIDI out, MIDI in, USB for bi-directional MIDI. You've also got two stereo outs and headphones as well. Uh, power is uh, on a kettle lead, so it's got its own power supply, no wall walk, which obviously is what you'd expect at this kind of price. Um, and that just about covers it really. Um, yeah, uh, a really um, legitimate um, successor to the Profit 5 in terms of sound and, and obviously there's more features as well. So it's really uh, a great instrument and it's very inspiring and very few downsides really. Um, yeah, let me just flick through a few more sounds. <laughs> So 
So there we have the Profit 6.